the world of food and drink. It's full of private back doors, hidden menus, and secret ingredients. I am food writer An Ko. And this week, I am in Mumbai on a hunt to find the city's best kept secrets. Where are we? Well, a trip, but not too far. <laughs> I'm a little lost. Oh, that's the sign. Let's go check it out. Hi. This is Secret Delicious. Mm. Mumbai is really interesting because it's that clash of high and low, clash of expensive and shiny. I want to know where the best places to dine are, the ones that aren't open to the public. I want to know who the best chefs are and what they've done to change the city's dining scene. But again, you've got to find it. So is this a space that anyone can just go to, or is it sort of uh, you no, need a it's by invite secret only. handshake? Uh, it's invite only. Reka has been running this crazy food festival for the last five years. She said, look, I'll, let me take you out. I got something really special to share with you. So if you're a good customer, you could come back again, right? You could come back, <laughs> but you had to have been there okay. to be able to but qualify. How did, so how did you find her the first time? She is considered to be one of the in-the-know people here in Mumbai in terms of the food and beverage world, in terms of the lifestyle industry. This is someone that's connected to every part of lifestyle in the city. We're in a place called Bandra. Originally, the Kohli fisheries and fishermen used to stay here. It feels almost like you've stepped back in time. But it's wonderful because you get to go and visit a part of Mumbai that you can walk around and there are pedestrian lanes where you're not going to get run over by a taxi. All right, come on, watch your steps. <laughs> where are we? Well, actually, but not too far. <laughs> I'm a little lost. It was fun. It was fun to sort of get a little bit lost in Bandra. And because of that, when you arrive at St. Jude's Bakery, it's quite special. It stands out. Did I mention that it was an old bakery? We're here. Oh. I wanted to see the art up front. They had a whole graffiti wall created Very for the cool. brand. The whole thing looks like it just fall down any minute now, <laughs> no. right? Don't worry, you're safe. <laughs> you're safe. Watch your step. It's not a bakery. Right? It used to be, right? He's doing something that you don't expect. Hello. We're here. <laughs> Hi, Gresh. Hi. Chef Gresh is one of the most respected young chefs in India. He's also the culinary director of one of the biggest restaurant groups in Mumbai. Rega, she's on that special VIP members only secret handshake kind of list. He told her, hey, I'm doing the swine dine. And swine dine is something that he's been doing for, I think it's something about eight years now. Gresh and his team, they had already broken down the pig, but he used parts from two different pigs. So we had pork cuts from a very large, I think 120 kg pig, other cuts from a 30 kilo pig. So you call these the swine dinners, and how yeah. is Bombay taking to these? They love it. Uh... So dinner started. We And it was 10 courses of delicious, crazy, fun little pork treats. Bombay. Grew up with so much of pork. Hey guys. Bombay was meat and fish eaters. So very simple for me to do something like that. Swine dine is more about teaching people to eat meat, actually. So it's not only the, the one cut of the animal. Every cut of the animal has a different texture or a different taste. So we have uh, ribs that are smoked. Uh, it's a six hour smoke. So he had done a three day brine on these pork ribs. What's the brine? Is it just salt water? Or? It's just salt, water, sugar and a little bit of uh, thyme and star anise. Brining is a very Western concept and a very Western way of adding flavor as well as texture to meats. It makes it a little more juicier and it changes the texture. So the texture is almost like uh, springy. Mm -hmm. So we do a brine and then after that it's going to be smoked for six hours. A really low smoke, 80 degrees, over a combination of charcoal and grilled onions. We 
we've roasted onions, almost charred them, burned them. Whatever juice comes out is just thick onion juice. We've added a little bit of fermented black garlic and fermented black onion. Above that, you have some spring onions and uh, flowering onions. We've taken the buds and we almost pickle them, so it's, they're almost like onion capers. This is a messy dish. So. <laughs> We're not cooking the ribs till it's spoon tender or fork tender. We want you to eat it with your hands so you actually go into the bone. It's delicious. It's something that's really noteworthy. It's something that's really special. That's Sarpotel. Uh, it's the East Indian version. It's the whole animal. It's the offcuts of the animal. Got the... Uh... The tongue, the liver, some part of the shoulder, some uh, some heart. Yeah, so this is a little bit of uh, coconut vinegar that we ferment ourselves, and it's it's gonna braise for a little longer. Just all the spices, we kind of get a little bit more mellow. Sorpatal, which was a dish that his uh, grandmother used to cook. So is there a secret grandma's ingredient? Blood, pork blood. <laughs> yeah. Can, you, can yeah. you use pork blood here? Yeah. Because the way Bombay is built right now, everything is outside the city. So pork's blood has to be really fresh. Nobody killing fresh pigs. You, you use it as an ingredient. Yeah. We used to dry it out and then use that in like gravies or any of that kind of thing. It's, it's huge. Blood What's is the thick. kind of flavor that, like is it salty, Choc is it chocolatey. sweet? <laughs> chocolatey. Chocolatey. So this has the ears, it has the tongue, it has the cheek, uh, a little bit of the liver and lots of chili and ginger and garlic. Personally, I think when I know there's ear and nose and whatever, I'm skeptical. But when I'm tasting it, I think the tiny cuts are making the difference. Because they're so small, they're all blending yeah. in. Yeah, there's something really interesting about cooking nose today. Uh, it sort of uh, has within it the whole idea of economy, of being frugal, of being respectful to the animal. The techniques of working with those ingredients get yeah. extremely refined. Because you have to be able to extract flavor from, like, say, a testicle. <laughs> or you have to be able to extract more. Like Kapura is a big thing, right? Like, goat's balls like goat's are a big balls. thing, yeah. 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 Okay. Now I really want to ask you, like, how do you cook a goat's ball? <laughs> Either you go long and slow or try and fast. When it's seared off, it's almost, the texture is almost like a scallop. How would you define Gresham's cooking? He is his grandmother on acid, you know, which was just brilliant because it basically meant he's cooking with the earnestness and the passion and the flavors of a grandma, but with this sort of psychedelic, creative, crazy lens. Thank you. If you can get access to one of these dinners, it's fantastic. Okay. You left almost ready for some action, and in a place like Mumbai, they're probably gonna go party or drink. Oh, that's the sign. Let's go check it out. Everyone yeah. in India loves this secret, but doesn't know how to keep it, so. <laughs> <laughs> So you have this crazy, brand new city, this, this city center, this very modern sort of set of buildings. There's a lot of construction, high rises, juxtaposed right against this sort of old heritage fishing village. It looks like it came out of like, you know, a history book. It's a sort of that Mumbai clash of things where it's contrasts, old up against new, right up against each other. So the Worley Fort was built in the late 17th century by the British and the village has been there for, for centuries. Hi, Karina, good to see you. Karina Agarwal is an alcohol expert and journalist who is very respected in the trade. So where exactly are we? Because this is a bit random for uh, supposedly one of the city's hottest bars. So we are in the Wali fishing village right mm -hmm. now. I see uh, our friend here is having a nice little bath. Yes. But it's crazy how close like this short fishing village is to these like, yeah. high rises. It's all like, you know, it's said like there's no space, right? Yeah. And so we're going down this way? Yes. Exciting. And when we turn the corner down sort of this path past the Coast Guard, 
there was this very cool looking sort of house um, and a sign called that says Slinkin Bardot. Ben, Nick. Oh. Hey. <laughs> nice bike, man. Thanks, buddy. How you doing? How you doing? And then the owner pulled up. Uh, Nick Harrison is one of the co-founders. How you been? So how did you end up like choosing this place for, you know? I mean, honestly, man, like we were so shocked the first time we came here. We wanted everybody else to have that same feeling. Ah. It's that kind of feeling of mystique, you know? Like you have no idea where you are, just kind of land up in the middle of a fishing village. And here we are. Ladies first. Nick is like super enthusiastic, super hyperactive. Just happy-go-lucky guy. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. It's really, really nice. This is Sakshi. Hi. How are you? Nice to so we were there to catch up with one of Hi. Karina's Hi. really good friends, Sakshi Saigal. Sakshi and her husband, Rahul, created a gin called Stranger and Sons, which only started distributing in the last six, seven months. OK, guys, so do you want to try some gin? We'd love to. So they're one of the first craft gin companies that's homegrown here in India. It's like a robust gin. Mm -hmm. There's a lot going on in the glass. Karina is my drink whisperer. She has a far better palate, but it was a nice gin. There's like citrus, but the mace and licorice is something that's really prominent to me. Nick's head bartender, Kim, made us uh, two drinks that they were testing. The first was a Gibson. Very lovely, very well balanced. He had served it with a pickled Madras onion. Yes. Cheers. 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 Thank you, Kim. My pleasure. It's an Indian onion that we found in the south of India. Oh, I love that. It has that sweet, sour, salty yeah. Yeah. flavor. That's good. It's always fun having drinks with people. Again, not being from this country, not having traveled extensively in India, I'm very ignorant of the laws around things like alcohol or, or bars. There are lots of different challenges. Mm. Um, I mean, even for example, for us sitting here drinking at, at the bar, you actually legally require a liquor permit. Every, like each you, mean the, you mean the customer? Each individual yes, yeah. actually needs to have a liquor permit in order to be in a That's bar like a and consume. That's a great law. <laughs> and, 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 they cost five rupees have, each. Do you have any? Yeah, of course. Can I cast you one? Of course, yeah. yeah. Oh my god. Uh, yeah, so they're five <laughs> rupees each, and so upon entering, we just... You legally actually need a permit to drink in this country is hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> on days that we know that there may be a little bit of heat, we... Maybe, we, maybe they actually check on us. Of yeah. course, yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Right. Kidding. So we yeah. keep a good stack of them. So for example, if it's New Year's Eve, <laughs> then maybe the, the exercise department might come in and actually check on this. Okay, cheers. What are we having? Yes. It's got yes. it's yes. Sun Gin. Yes. It's yeah. got mulberry wine in it, so we make our own homemade mulberry wine. Wow. Enjoy. Thank you. So again, I don't think we want to emphasize making our own wine, because that's probably also illegal. <laughs> <laughs> There's a favorite Indian wine called Jugad. Do you know it? Yeah. I know Jugad. <laughs> I'm, I'm my... I think one of the coolest things I learned on this trip is a new term for me, Jugad. Jugad would be like finding a way to meander through your problems. Oh. How, how would you, like, circumvent. Look, circumvent, yeah, exactly. To get you end result, but you might necessarily follow the paper. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we Singaporeans. MRT's late for five minutes. We like, oh my god, I have to like put on go on Twitter and blame the government. Right? We don't try to fix our problems. We we complain. Here in Mumbai, they're like, okay, no problem. Get around it. That's genius, and that's a great way of living, as long as you don't get caught too often. What was cool is that after we left Nick and Sakshi, Karina wanted to take me to another place. We're going here. This doesn't look very discreet. Wait for it, it's coming. Okay, I'm gonna trust you on trust this. Trust me. So we walk through Thirsty City, we walk past the concierge, into an empty part of the place, so India went through its own prohibition in the 1950s. There were underground bars, that there was, it was an underground drinking culture here as well. So I was told to look for the fire exit. Okay. That's where it is. Okay. Oh, that's the sign. Okay. It feels like here in Mumbai, because people like that exclusivity, it's very, very trendy. It's very, very welcome. Mm. Oh, there. That's the fire escape when we're supposed to go up there. Okay, the fire exit and fire escape. Yeah. I got it. I want to know where to drink, obviously, but drink in a kind of discreet, cool kind of way, not with like the teeming masses. You know? Let's see how we get in. Is there a door, doorbell or just knock? Oh, hi. Hello. Obviously, they know you. Hi. Hi. You don't want to go where everyone else is there taking Instagram selfies. Nice Me too. To meet you. Hi, Veer. Hey, 
guys. Hi, Santosh. How have you been? Santosh is the head bartender over at Remo's. So he made a cocktail. It was served in a coconut husk. He'd taken uh, another part of the coconut and made a coaster. He'd taken another part of the coconut husk and made a plate he could burn. This is a chocolate husk. We are burning them and giving a smoky flavor to the drink. So we use coconut flash, coconut water, a little bit of white wine, and a very little of agave to give the sharpness and body to the drink. Yes. Cheers. Cheers. It was a great coconut cocktail. It was not too sweet. It was quite balanced. It was quite light. And it's interesting. Thank you again for the sneak preview. Everyone in India loves this secret, but doesn't know how to keep it. So, <laughs> so let's see how long it stays. I can get the inside track. I can meet these people. I can learn their stories. I can experience their concepts. Mumbai is one of the most cosmopolitan cities in the world. So there is that opulence, there is that chicness, there is that sort of trendiness here, but it's trying to find it amidst sort of picking it out amidst the rubble. Mumbai is chaotic. Mumbai is crazy. It, it's a sea of crashing people and cars and tuk-tuks and motorcycles that makes you go a little bit nuts. But it also has these pockets of sanctuary, luxury apartments and beautiful restaurants. Thanks. So welcome to Qualia. Cool, thanks. Yeah. This is great, this is stunning. Rahul is the living legend in the food world, not just in India, but you know, in Asia. We do all our breads, everything here fresh. Raul opened the first independent fine dining restaurant in Mumbai. It was called Indigo, and Raul then took this restaurant up to become one of the best restaurants in the country and in the region. And he just reopened a new restaurant called Qualia. There is an off-menu dish in Indigo that people will obviously ask him about. It was a mango curry served with fish. That's the dish. All right, there you go. Wow, it looks fantastic. I'll come around and join you. Mm. The curry underneath is a raw mango curry. Mm -hmm. You basically cook down raw mango pieces yep. uh, with a little bit of uh, turmeric and vegetable stock. Then you puree that and sweeten it a little bit using uh, jaggery. This is great. This is fantastic. It's the overall sweet sour profile that mm -hmm. you have here. Yes. This is just a glaze here of honey, chili, pink, peppercorn. He's obsessed with the balance of textures and flavors you find in Indian street snacks that deliver you that combination of sweet, sour, salty, spicy, hot, cool, crisp. It's good. Thank you. When you asked me what my inspiration was for the food, I thought the best way to explain all that to you would be to actually try some of it. Okay. And since we don't want you to get Bombay belly, I thought we'd just do it at home. So it was a real treat for me. Chef Rula had prepared three different chocolates mm -hmm. for me to try. So what you do is you grab one of these. You want to make a little, little hole in it. This is, is Bombay street food. Bombay yourself. Yeah. You know, so it, this is like healthy junk food. <laughs> uh, you just put a little potato, and we put some of the sprouted moong. Okay, and then you just take this. So you dip it? Yeah. And one bite. Okay. These chaat are perfect little bites. Mm. So there's the oh, tingling they, on they the tongue. Yeah. yeah. And they also represented perfectly this idea he wanted to communicate. That he's not just about sweet and sour, which is a complete misconception. It's, it's like the ultimate um, sensory combination yeah. in, in, in one bite. It's got like umami, yeah. everything. He also served safe puri as well as day puri. Both of which were fantastic. The safe puri? Yeah. Try one. Eat the whole thing? Yeah, I just pop it in your mouth. Yeah. Again, you'll see the sweet, sour. And they're street mm. food, right? But they are so complex. There's so many ingredients that go into yeah. these. There's chaat masala, there's pomegranate. This is your date and tamarind chutney. Difference between that and this yeah. is you have yogurt in there. So you get your heat spice from the green chutney. Yeah, yeah. You have the cooling. Yes. Uh, of the yogurt. Just pop the whole thing in your mouth. Great. It makes it velvety yeah. and smooth, yeah? 
like how much liquid there is. So it really just covers your mouth entirely. In Mumbai, her menus are huge. But even with that, you're gonna get customers who say, chef, I want you to make this. Huh? I mean, I always believe if I have the ingredients in the house and if somebody wants something off menu and we're not like too much in the <laughs> <laughs> um, then I'm happy to do yeah. it. Mango curry with a sauteed fish, it's not on the menu. And I can see sometimes the customers, they're uncomfortable with reading what's on the menu or yeah. they haven't quite figured it out. You know, then I say, is there something that you'd like that's not on here, you know? Mm -hmm. So this very much speaks a little bit of my coastal Maharashtran background. He is thing. really fascinating because this is a guy that has a Maharashtran father. His mother is a German Jew. Grew up in between New York and Mumbai. Uh, my grandmother used to also make a um, shengi curry using mango. So, so like the raw mango acts as a souring agent, mm -hmm. right? And then you have um, you have the coconut that just carries it. It has a palate then is exposed to east and west throughout his entire life. And I think when you have a palate that has been exposed so to so many different influences, so many different flavors at a young age, you're able to then amalgamate more things into the food that you create. It's spicy, but it's... It creeps up on you. <laughs> you go to a lot of restaurants and chefs are now being so conceptual where it's like about, it's all about the intellectual pursuit of an idea as opposed to we're going to make you taste and, and feel something. I'm sorry, I'm very old fashioned that way. <laughs> I'm not very big into mental and gustatory masturbation, yeah. if you will. Um, I like to roll up my sleeves and eat. Yeah. When you get too conceptual, too sort of intellectual and whatever, I don't think it's, it's food anymore. I don't know, that's just, that's just me. Every city has secrets. The bigger it is, the busier it is, the more secrets you have. In the food world, there are lots of secrets. Secret dining spots, secret bars, off-menu things. If you have the right access, you know the right people, you know the secret handshake, the right wink. You can get to these. It's just a matter of finding out. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.